This place makes octopuses huge, and this one, on the contrary, makes them tiny. Let me explain why. The largest octopus alive, or one of the largest, goes by the name, surprise, surprise, Giant Pacific Octopus. The biggest one ever measured spanned 30 feet across and weighed over 600 pounds. But even the average Giant Pacific Octopus looks pretty impressive for an octopus, measuring around 16 feet across and weighing roughly 110 pounds. The Giant Pacific Octopus thrives in the coastal waters of the northern part of the Pacific Ocean stretching from Korea and Japan to Canada, the USA, and Mexico. And it's in this habitat that the secret of its immense size lies. The giant Pacific octopus prefers cold waters with temperatures of 59 degrees Fahrenheit or even lower. If you've ever dipped into such water, you know that staying in it for long is really hard. But that's because we're not giant octopuses. Their bodies are just naturally better suited for colder, oxygen-rich, and nutrient-packed waters. You can find these giant octopuses in the tidal zone at depths of up to 6,600 feet. Meanwhile, the octopus clearly knows where it's cool and where it's downright freezing, and it doesn't cross that line. Pretty smart move on its part, because otherwise it just wouldn't survive. To everyone for getting to hit that like button, please do it now before it slips your mind completely. Come on, you guys. Here's an interesting thing. Even within the same species, there are differences. For instance, giant Pacific octopuses tend to be smaller when they live in warmer waters, but bigger in colder waters. Yeah, in the northern part of the Pacific Ocean. And this is Octopus wolfi, the tiniest known octopus species measuring no more than one inch in length and weighing less than 0.03 ounces. This little creature lives in the western part of the Pacific Ocean at depths ranging from 10 to 100 feet. Although the octopus has quite a broad habitat range, when you compare its habitat to this map, you realize it performs the warmer regions. I totally get why it does, to be honest. The octopus hangs out in waters ranging from moderately warm to tropical, with temperatures between 64 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That's way warmer than where the giant Pacific octopus lives. To gauge how much habitat truly impacts an animal's size, we can look at the common octopus as our control group. The common octopus is one of the most studied and intelligent species, but overall it's pretty average. It's literally average, sitting between the biggest and smallest octopuses. The common octopus grows up to about 10 inches across, can weigh up to 20 pounds, and lives for one to two years. The octopus has a really wide range, stretching from the eastern part of the Atlantic Ocean, including the Mediterranean Sea and the southern coast of England, all the way down to the southern coast of South Africa. You can also find common octopuses around the Azores, Canary Islands, and the Cape Verde Islands. They're pretty common in the Western Atlantic, too. Now let's compare the range with the water temperature map, and it's still either really warm or just warm, but not too much. Scientists have even figured out that the preferred temperature for common octopuses ranges from 59 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, it's warmer than for giant octopuses and cooler than for tiny ones. So there's a clear pattern. Cold water makes octopuses bigger. Some attentive viewers might realize that the common octopus and the tiny one share some living space, but there's a key distinction. The common octopus chills out at depths of up to 656 feet, while the little fella tops out at 98 feet. The nearer to the surface, the warmer it gets. Now let's break down how all this works. Deep sea species are usually much larger than their shallow water relatives. It's a scientific fact with an equally scientific explanation. The deep sea is like an island. Ever heard of island gigantism? Well, it's kind of like that down there. Just like islands, the deep sea has limited resources and is cut off from the rest of the ocean. Biologists suggest that deep water creatures may get big because there's not much food down below. Most of the food down there comes from stuff near the surface, but a lot of energy gets lost on the way down. With limited food, bigger bodies might be better for surviving when food is scarce or for traveling long distances to find food. Other researchers suggest that when there aren't many predators around that can feast on larger prey, animals might grow without worrying much about their safety. Cold temperatures in the deep ocean slow down growth rates, which might also lead to bigger body sizes. Slowing down growth also means living longer. While most octopuses barely make it to two years, a giant Pacific octopus can live for three to five years. Just think about it. Common, mimic, and blue-ringed octopuses only live for one to one and a half years. The smallest octopus hardly hangs around for more than six months. Even if it wanted to grow bigger, half a year isn't nearly enough time. 
On the flip side, the giant octopus has all the time in the world, and that's partly why it's gigantic. It's fascinating how temperatures affect the growth and size of living things. When it's chilly, growth can slow down, but oddly enough, this can make bodies bigger. Animals born in the cold but raised in warmth tend to grow faster, but not larger. This means they experience rapid growth but don't end up bigger, particularly when compared to those born in warmth but raised in cooler conditions. Octopus growth generally depends on factors like age, size, maturity, food consumption, metabolism, temperature, and possibly lighting. Interestingly, octopuses don't have a skeletal structure limiting their maximum size, unlike most animals. In other words, they can keep growing without any bones holding them back. I'm not exaggerating here. Octopuses are one of those creatures that can keep growing indefinitely until they die. Only death, or obviously changes in their environment, can put a stop to their growth. Here's how it goes down. Octopuses are born, and then how they grow depends on their surroundings. Some are pushed to grow super fast, reaching adulthood in a year, reproducing, and then kicking the bucket. Others take their time due to their environment, growing slowly, getting big, and living a relatively long life. The Turkey's octopus holds the record for a long life among octopuses, living in the coldest waters around Antarctica. It's not an exaggeration because temperatures there range from 28 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it seems like the cold water slows it down so much it can live up to 12 years. However, it only grows up to about 6 inches, which makes sense when you consider the temperature, depth, light, and food availability. Basically, there are a lot of factors at play. I've mentioned before how octopuses change their growth rates and sizes when they move to a different temperature environment. After that, their offspring start changing too. When the water gets warmer, octopuses have to work harder to maintain their body's balance, which means they have to eat more to keep up. But since there's no extra food available, this creates a cycle where they're constantly at risk of running low on energy. Smaller octopuses struggle more when it comes to hunting, so they end up burning through more energy just to get their food. As a result, they require a larger amount of food to fuel themselves back up. It's a vicious cycle. With these octopuses, there's a link between how much energy they burn and how much protein they make, but it works in reverse. Put simply, the more energy they use up, the less protein they churn out. Protein's important because it's like fuel for their growth engine. More protein means a bigger body. But with ocean temperatures rising, you know why, these octopuses will keep on shrinking because they're producing less protein. And yes, while small octopuses are getting even tinier, the giant ones might also start shrinking maybe down to the size of the common octopuses. To keep their current size, they only have two options, either move further north or dive deeper. But here, factors like light, food, and a bunch of other things come into play, so moving doesn't offer any guarantees. Meanwhile, scientists have figured out why octopuses of the same species can look different. Right now, as you're watching this video, there are pale purple octopuses with giant cartoonish eyes wandering along the seabed of the Pacific Ocean. Some of them have prominent bumps, while others look like they have smooth skin. For a long time, scientists couldn't figure out if they were related. And then in 2019, it turned out that these octopuses belong to the same species. Simply put, the wartier the octopus, the deeper it lives. Not only that, a team of researchers also found that the bumpiest specific warty octopuses, which can live as deep as 1.7 miles, are much smaller, about the size of a desktop keyboard, compared to smoother skin octopuses. These octopuses measure around 35 inches long and live at depths of about 0.6 miles. Wait a minute, you might say. This goes against everything we've discussed so far. Depth is supposed to make octopuses larger. Indeed, that's why scientists were taken aback. These cartoonish-looking octopuses are exceptions to the deep-sea gigantism rule. Perhaps, for them, smaller size at depth could be due to limited food availability. Granted, we don't know exactly what they eat and how much, but what other explanations do we have? The deal with those little bumps is still unclear. Some shallow water octopuses can make temporary bumps, camouflaging their bodies to a bumpy surface, but scientists found out our octopuses are born with them, not adapting along the way. Plus, they live deep down. So basically, no one really has a clue, but everyone's fascinated. We need to do more research, and then we'll definitely learn more about octopuses. Once, scientists figured out that an animal's size depends on what it does in life. 
Female tremolo octopus octopuses can reach almost six and a half feet in length, while males are only about 0.8 inches long. Additionally, females weigh about 40,000 times more than males. To put their size difference in perspective, a male could fit inside his lady's pupil. This sexual dimorphism is considered one of the most extreme. Though individuals may seem like entirely different species, there's a reason for these differences. To put it simply, males have no need to grow large. Male energy is mainly used for seeking a partner rather than for growing, especially since finding a mate in the vast ocean can be challenging. Once a mate is found, the male just needs to produce a small amount of semen to fertilize eggs, so it's totally okay for males to be tiny. Plus, after fertilization, they usually die anyway. Females, in contrast, need to be larger for effective reproduction. They're often bigger than males not only because their eggs take up more space than sperm, but also because producing eggs requires a lot of energy. Plus, they have the added task of carrying the eggs. One female can produce over 100,000 of them. Since octopuses don't have any nests or shelters for their eggs out in the open ocean, the female octopus forms a sort of rod to which she can attach her babies. This rod grows naturally from calcium carbonate, which is also what coral skeletons and shells are made of. Keeping her little ones close, she can shield them from pests and make sure they get enough air to breathe. Just think about the effort it takes. With so much on her plate, it's only natural for the moms to be big. Here's a question that popped into my head. How do tiny male octopuses even find their mates? Do they have exceptional eyesight to spot a bright female from afar? Or does the female release a chemical into the water, leaving a scent trail that only her potential suitor can follow? Well, nobody knows. And considering that tremo octopus octopuses lead a nomadic lifestyle, finding a partner becomes quite a tricky task. Yet somehow they manage. Scientists just haven't figured out how yet. Perhaps someday we'll hear about an octopus tender. Nature's full of surprises. Since you made it this far, go ahead and hit that like button. I appreciate it. See you later.